This is my animation before I apply everything in this video, and this is it after. Now, if only it was that easy. There's a few ways you can add gradients to your layers, but my personal favorite is through layer styles. Now, by using a gradient on a layer style as opposed to a gradient ramp through your effects, it means the gradient will stick to the object rather than applying it to world space. All we need to do is right click our layer, go to layer styles, and then select gradient overlay. Change the colors to what you like and play around with the angle. And then you can also change the gradient type as well to get some cool different effects. I personally change mine depending on the look and feel I'm going for, but one of my personal favorites is Reflected, and that's what I used here. You can then copy this and apply it to your other layers as well, and change the colors as you see fit. It can really help add another dimension to your project. Now, if I mention glows, you might think the 80s, synthwave, and UI design. However, used right, I think they can really help add something to your project. Now there's two glows I'm going to talk about. There's going to be one through layer styles and one through the traditional glow effect. First, layer styles. If you haven't guessed by now, I'm a pretty big fan of layer styles. So again, we're going to right click our layer, go to layer styles, and you can choose either outer glow or inner glow. For this, I'm going to use inner glow. I want to give it the feel of adding a highlight to my object, similar to using a rim light in photography or in 3D. It will just help to separate our object a little from the background and give it some light. I'm going to change the color to something just a bit lighter than what I'm currently using and then increase the size and the range just to soften it out a little. Now we can also stack this with a traditional glow as well. So in my effects and presets, I'm going to type glow and you can add this directly to your layer or an adjustment layer if you want to apply it to everything in your comp instead. Then I'm just going to play with the threshold radius and intensity until we get something that looks pretty nice. Of course, this is all personal preference. Now you could also use a plugin like Deep Glow to give a nicer and softer looking glow compared with the traditional After Effects glow, but that's a paid plugin and I'll leave that for another video. Now you can always make a flat layer look super interesting by adding some texture, and there's multiple ways you can do this. First, you could just apply a simple noise to your layer or adjustment layer, just to add a little grain to the overall composition. I usually find that 5-10% to works pretty well and is just enough for my liking. You could also add some noise to your layer styles in your glow settings or a drop shadow. But if you want to take everything a step further, you can add animated textures and it's super simple to set up. In a new composition, I'm going to bring in my texture image. Now you can use multiple here, but for this purpose, I'm just going to stick with one and that's what I'm going to animate. We can select our layer and go to effects, distort and then offset. Then I'm going to alt click the shift center two and we're going to type in posterize time parentheses and in that we're going to put 12 and then we're going to follow that by a semicolon then we're going to put underneath that a wiggle and you can type in any amount that you want now i'm going to use something pretty large here now this tells after effects to offset the texture 12 times a second giving us the look that it's now animated then all we have to do is map the texture comp to our layer add a time remap with a loop out expression, and now we have a looped and animated texture. Now, if you want to make this much faster, you could use a plugin like Ray Dynamic Texture, but I'll leave that up to you. Finally, we need to talk about Chromatic Aberration. Chromatic Aberration is an optical effect that occurs when different colors of light refract at slightly different angles. This causes a blurred or color distorted image. It's often most noticeable around high contrast edges in photos or videos, and occurs in real life. Now as a digital artist, we can take this upon us to add it to our project to make it look not so clean and kind of simulate a little more of real life and you'll definitely see it in a lot of 3D projects. To do this, we can duplicate our layer of composition and add a shift channels and then move the layers manually. But thankfully, there's a much easier way. Plugin Everything made a free plugin called Quick Chromatic Aberration that basically does the whole process for you. All you need to do is download and install it and then add an adjustment layer to the top of your comp. You could add it to your layer, but I use an adjustment layer just for organizational purposes. Then just tweak the settings to your liking. I mainly just play with the position and the scale, and there you have it. You've added chromatic aberration and it was really that easy. Now I did make this animation during downtime in studio and you can find a link to that in the description below. But your After Effects journey doesn't have to end there and you can learn more tips and techniques by clicking this video here.